getting your starter, choosing your main, all that. So that's going to give us a little bit of a chance to discuss this bingo card here. And, you know, with all bingo cards, first thing that you got to, to me anyway, that you take a look at is what's in that center square. And uh, we've got Mankey and Meowth here in the center square, as we also have our, our times being set. Both runners doing 11 o'clock, Tear doing 11.15, uh, Cruel doing 11.23. So the times are nice and fun there. Um, so again, Mankey and Meowth in the center square. What is that, you know, when you see that, what does that uh, tell you about this? Uh, the first thing it tells me is, I hope to God, either one of the starters or somebody early on has information for me for that. There's no guaranteed way to come across a Mankey or Meowth. So you're really just hoping to find some sort of information as you go along. Yeah, the other interesting thing that I see about this card, you know, we do have the Win the Bug Catching Contest, which explains why they're sending their stuff to Friday when they did. But to me, the interesting thing about this card is you have 30 plus Pokemon owned and 90 Pokemon seen both on the card. And we're taking a look at our starters right here. We've got Ghastly as an option. We've got Feraligator, which I'm imagining both of them are going to take a look at Feraligator there. And we have Magneton. Both runners taking different options. Cruel going for the Magneton, Tear taking the Feraligator. Uh, Magneton's not terrible. It's got it's got decent special stats and it's got decent defense. Um, I think the Feraligator's a better option just based on uh, the attack stat. Yeah, the well, especially with that set, attract scratch, you know, uh, outrage. Uh, Magneton doesn't have the greatest uh, stat uh, move pool in the world. We'll take a look at Feraligators here in a second. Uh, let's see, we've got. Uh, Sacred Fire, Cotton Sport, Crab Hammer, Solar Beam. That's a very strong set to begin with. Sacred Fire and Crab Hammer being the two things that stand out. So I definitely think at the beginning here that uh, Tear has the advantage. That's yeah, a solid special move set for that for Alligator, especially the Stab Crab Hammer. Yeah, the one thing that m makes me nervous about the Magneton is the. 4x weakness to ground type attacks and I, I don't like you know I don't run this you know in the bingo sense of the word but I, I know enough to know that I don't like running a main with a 4x weakness no especially if you run into something carrying earthquake you're almost guaranteed to die to it no matter what yeah, I mean, speaking of mains, there's a nice option there, although, again, it is a main with a 4x weakness to Renator having that 4x fighting weakness, but Titar's always nice to see. Tyranitar's got really high, sp uh, really high base attack stat. It's not a bad option, especially if you get something like a rock slide or an ancient power, uh, a strong stab move to go with it. Doesn't look like he's going to scout it, though. Kind of just moving on from it. I mean, we're probably going to see a bunch of Pokeball checking here early anyway because of the 30 Pokemon owned uh, tab. So now, of course, uh, continuing taking a look at this bingo card here, you know, we have a lot of things to overlap. You know, we have, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different uh, spots in the card that overlap with the 30 Pokemon owns. There are a total of 10 of the 25 spots that involve catching Pokemon in some sort. So this is at least a semi-synergistic card. And it actually goes to 11 if you count the own six different normal type Pokemon, which I probably should. Got a couple of static TM spots on that card too as well. TM10 and TM50, both both static TMs that are easily attainable too. So it's a couple of VC goals that uh, can work hand in hand with uh, these varied Pokemon encounters. Yeah, absolutely. The Pokemon with uh, four moves sharing its types, uh, that does make, hi Articuno, how are you? That does make the dual type Pokemon like the Magneton much more appealing than say the single type for Alligator because you really don't want to have, you know, force of the same moves on a single type Pokemon they're sharing the, you know that are sharing the uh, the same type. Uh, Steel's always a tough one to uh Steel's a tough one to get that goal with though. Uh, with just the general lack of a variety of steel type moves. 
Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying we're gonna get that with Magneton. I'm just using that as the example. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six badges up in the corner. That's also a fun one here. And uh, we're gonna see our first bet at rival. And uh, we have a ghastly sighting, so we we're gonna see what all of the three starter options did have. And uh, yeah, we have one option for this uh, ghastly. We have outrage because we have scratch and double slap as well. I gotta love the fact that we have attract on the genderless magneton, so it doesn't work because of the way the mechanics work. <laughs> So a goal that I, a goal on this card that I haven't seen a lot of, uh, I don't think I've seen it once in the races that I've commentated yet, is defeat eight trainers on Route 35. That one's a, it's an easy goal to get, and, and it, you do have a couple of different options if you uh, if you set the clock to nighttime. Yeah, the the one that. Um that stands out to me is, is the more interesting one here, is the trade a Pokemon uh, option. And they're going to be looking for any of the four Johto trade mons. Uh, you'd have to find either a Bellsprout, a Krabby, an Abra, or a Dragonair. Well, you know, we joked about the last time we did commentary, Miz. We have already seen King or so breed strats? Breed strats are a possibility. At the very least, though, trade a Pokemon is in a spot on the card that it may not come may not come down to it. We're gonna get yelled at though, because <laughs> everybody swears breed strats aren't a thing. Oh, of course not. But I'm not gonna stop, you know, talking about it because here's here's the thing with me is every time I do commentary for something randomizer. I take on, I find one thing and latch onto it, and breed strats are my thing here. So just just expect breed strats every time I'm talking. That Tyranitar's got Karate Chop. Not a not a strong move, but it's it's strong enough against this Magneton. Yeah, let's see what the catch rate can do here. Uh, Cruel probably you know, might consider a main switch if he catches this, but Tyranitar is having none of that, saying, I do not want to play nicely in the sandbox. You can go back to where you came from. That could be for the best for Cruel, though. It was a female Tyranitar. Uh, and with the way that gender works in Gen 2, uh, that means that that Tyranitar is going to have lower end physical attack stats. It means, uh, so I, I had to said to pull up the gender ratio for Tyranitar. It is 50 50, uh, so you're looking at a 0 to 7 dB attack on that Tyranitar for it being female. And uh, there is the Articuno that we saw, so Cruel probably going to switch this and hey we've got a thunderbolting articuno nothing wrong with that there's your steel type move <laughs> ooh tear finding a rich creamy nugget over there in the forest that's going to be 500 or 5000 delicious poke dollars A rich Articuno. Articuno has teleport. Oh my gosh. That is both a blessing and a curse here. That teleport could come in really handy if you can get your hands on the Articuno in the first place. Yeah, and, and teleport could potentially allow for fly skip. That is a possibility too. Um I think, though, with six badges being in a corner spot on the card, uh, while that would while that would make a great possibility, I think both of these runners are going to be inclined to go ahead and get fly anyway. Yeah, but here's the other thing: is six badges on the card, but one of them is the mineral badge. So we're yeah, you're definitely going to have to see. We are going to have to go down to uh, Cyanwood City and do all that. And if you're down there, you might as well. So it looks like Cruel is starting to get his Pokemon own set up. We already have a Hitmonchan, and there's the Articuno again. 
he really, really, really wants the Articuno. So Terra took the time to uh, talk to Mom in town to uh, tell her not to save his money rather than waiting for the phone call. Um, interesting decision. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Cruel finally gets the Articuno here, so uh, probably going to main switch this Articuno. We know it's got Thunderbolt, we know it's got uh, Razor Leaf, we know it's got Teleport, and I believe you said it had a Steel move, so that, you know, I'm, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it was carrying Metal Claw. Metal Claw. I'm like, it was a Metal Claw or Iron Tail? I didn't remember, so I wasn't going to say it. Yeah, that's a nice main there for Cruel. Unfortunately, we get on a card where release started before level 11 isn't on there. So Cruel's gonna make his way up 30 towards uh, Violet City Terror. Heading back towards Cherry Grove, he might still be looking for... I don't think he's looking for a main though. That For Alligator's level eight now, so it looks like he might be committed to it. Yeah. Also, look, no kill Lapras on the card. What do we find right away? Naturally, that's always the way these things work, man. Welcome to Randomizer, where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Terra has seen so many of these Tyranitars at this point. At this point, can we call them Tyranitars? I can see you face palming right now. Absolutely. <laughs> I was trying so hard to no sell you, and I'm just like, I don't. I, I can't. Know. <laughs> huh. Cruel found a magnet. That could, uh, that'll help out the Thunderbolt damage. Yeah, nothing wrong with that here. So keep an eye on this fat guy by the berry tree. We'll be coming back to see him later because we'll need to get TM50 off of him. Terra's found the Articuno as well. He may just run from it. Oh, he's gonna scout it or get some experience off it. So uh, we'll get the experience. I have to ask, are we gonna go three for three on uh, every time you and I are... are, are around for a Pokemon Cinco Bingo that uh, Kenya's gonna be a Politoed? You know, I I don't want to jinx it, but I'm feeling froggy. I mean, if, if it, now if it's a jinx, you definitely did jinx it, so I'm okay with that too. Get jinxed for a jinx or take the leap with the frog, right? Yeah, either one is, is perfectly acceptable. Cruel's gonna head right for uh right for Faulkner's gym. See what the level nine has in store for us. Hopefully, uh we're hoping it's not something horrendous here. Worst thing for um Cruel here is a is a, something with a rock type and ground type moves. Hopip is not the worst thing. However, Hopip is nice because that's information on Skip Loom, which is up there in column three, row one. Yeah, even like a Hopip with Rock Slide is going to be something practically negligible. Terra seeing it for Alligator, he's not even going to not going to take a look at that. Yeah, so that level nine super super easy. Now, that's the one thing I, I love about these early couple of Pokemon games is each game has a level nine gatekeeper right near the beginning. Here in you know Crystal, you've got the level nine in Faulkner's Gym. In Red, Blue, Yellow, you have the level nine at the end of the uh, the end of the Iridian Forest. If you play Pokemon Yellow, you can find a level level 9 Pidgeotto in Viridian Forest. If you're doing the glitch run, you hate to see it. Well, back in the day, you'd hate to see it. The thing was a run killer. I know when I played Yellow casually, I was all about the uh, getting the Pidgeotto there. 
I, I was a big fan of Bird Jesus. Also, quick shout out to Pokemon Yellow Ash percent. I'm assuming that's where you do the Ash team from the anime? You play Pokemon Yellow as though you were playing playing it from the anime. There's a whole route for it. It's insanity. I am, I'm scared, but at the same time intrigued. Well, good luck catching 29 Tauros. That's all I can say. <laughs> Meanwhile... Wait, that's actually part of the route? That is part of the route, man. Meanwhile, we, got a, now. we have a mud slapping quillfish over on Cruel Side. Yeah, if I can say you wanted me to catch 29 Tauros, dude, that's bull. Oh my gosh. <laughs> also, Zap Cannon Kingra taking its first victim because, you know, well, we're weak to Zap Cannon. Both players, right around the same point, that. That death that Terra just took to the Kingdra, pretty costly, as now Cruel is getting to start Faulkner. And of course, the 50% Zap Cannon never hits when you use it, always hits when they do. I swear the AI gets 95% accuracy on the thing. He's hit three of them. Yeah, that's 75% accuracy. You gotta love it. Although Kabutops here from uh, Faulkner here, not a problem because we have Thunderbolt and technically Razor Leaf, which easily wipes the floor with the uh, giant Scythe Crab. Or Mantis Fossil, whatever you want to call it. Oh, the restream lagged as we were going to see what the TM wants. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute because we have somebody else who's going to take a look at it and we are going to see potentially some silver beam strats when we don't get a proc on the paralysis. The back to back zap cannons with the crit! Are you kidding me, Kingdra? Please! It, apparently it was slam. Welcome to the jam. Welcome to the jam indeed. I love that, like, Cruel took his time scrolling through <laughs> scrolling through the text and then right as it was going to show us what it was, the whole thing lagged out and we couldn't see it. This Kindra, I don't know if, like, wide lens or what at this point. This thing has ridiculous accuracy. Yeah, this is just insane. Why can't I get this luck when I play the games? Even casually. I don't know if Terra maybe wants to try heading for Sprout Tower, fight some of these trainers for some experience. Looks like he's just going to take some wild encounters. That is rough. A rough he, wall for him. Yeah, he might be looking for something to uh, try and tank through that too, because I know there was a Gligar over here which would be immune to the Zap Cannon. That is interesting, though. Finding a Slowpoke... That's a fast way into that Polyrath Slow King goal in the top right corner. Yeah, absolutely. So he's definitely going to pick this up. So why? here's my question is, you know, this poor Pharrell... Oh, never mind. He crits. He crits <laughs> so this it. poor Pharrell gets missing. But... Accuracy is not on Terra's side today. He's... It, if, it's the, if it's not the opponent hitting everything, it's him hitting nothing. Yeah, it's... And of course, we're getting all of these different berries, and we don't have the berry goal. And look, another crit. He might be... He might actually be better off trying to switch over to Sacred Fire, since Crabhammer has a higher crit chance. Hey, there's a Polytoke. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, we are going to be approaching this, so we're going to have our first bingo square marked off in a second, as Cruel is going to go ahead and get the Poison Barb. So that is going to tell Tear where Cruel is at the moment. Not much he can do about it with that hard wall Kingdra, but now he does have a little bit of information on how far behind he is.
Cruel finding a friend ball so his friends can get in the ball. And just remember, now, now he has to use that to catch a water type Pokemon because fish are friends, not food. I I gotta give it to you the the, the Finding Nemo reference. I I applaud it. See, I can make good references every now and then. Eh, from time to time, I, I will give you that. Crow's fighting a. Fighting the hiker here, maybe trying to get some more information or get some extra experience on the Articuno. Since the Articuno is a legendary, it does have a slower experience curve. I, I, I'm disappointed in you. You have been disappointed in me twice already. Why? Well, <laughs> Why well, this first time? Off, first off, we have Dunsparce, which is going to be on the on the card. But I'm disappointed because you had a chance to go legend. Wait for it. Dairy. So Cruel marking the Dunspar Square. Nice little flying for him. I can't. I can't no sell it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I tried. I almost got it. And I'm like, no. That's too bad. But on no. on an on an unrelated note, Terry is now past the Kingdra. So he is able to move on. We do get to the quill fishing. He'll be able to fight Faulkner now. Did get some zap cannon misses. That definitely saved his uh, saved his race there. He couldn't couldn't really stand to be walled there much longer. Come to the dark side. We have cookies. Well, if the Dunsparce in the Union Cave wasn't enough, we found a Wobbuffet as well. And that is a Wobbuffet with Thunder. Unfortunate Paralysis there. That means that he is going to have to heal that Paralysis off before he heads into uh, Slowpoke Well. But we are going to go ahead and pick up the Wobbuffet as well, just to guarantee, guarantee we've got that square. For Alligator learned Vine Whip. So basically, is that what happens when he ties a tree branch to his tail and, you know, whips it at you? I don't... I don't actually know what to say to that one. I mean, it, I mean and, unless the four alligators are literally taking a hanging vine from the jungle and using it as a whip a la Indiana Jones, which, by the way, is amazing. Can somebody please draw me a for alligator with the Indiana Jones hat and a whip, uh, and an actual vine whip in its hand? Can we get, can I get that, please? That sounds like the best commission work ever. Yeah, so Cruel gonna, gonna go ahead and PC heal here. Get the paralysis off of his Articuno before he heads into uh, Slowpoke Well, as Terra is now past Faulkner and making his way down 32. Terra finding a Hoot Hoot on on Route 32. That's in. Yeah, that's useful towards the Noctowl Firo goal. Yeah, see, so I, I, these are great. I love it when we get information because, you know, especially when they skip over it like this, because that means we're probably going to see fly strats, which is great. Now we're going to go have to uh, chase after an old man into a well. There's a lassie joke in there somewhere. Tear hit the uh, tear hit an optional trainer here. Unfortunately, the trainer was not good for any information. He does get a little extra experience for the for alligator, but 
Not an, not entirely a useful encounter there. Is call a lassie on the card? Don't encourage him. Oh, keep encouraging me. Please, keep encouraging me. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh is terrifying. What? <laughs> well, Terror has his poison barb now. He's getting ready to head into Union Cave. I'm terrified for my life. You're fine. We, we're only connected by a microphone right now. You're good. Yeah, and the ring was only a videotape. Also, and there's the Dunsparce for Terror, so he's going to be able to pick that one up as well. So both of our runners can be lucky Dunsparce. Uh, this kind of reminds me of a little bit of the, of the early encounters uh, of the last race I did, where the middle square was Onyx and, or Scyther. HMO5 Flash was on the card. I forget who and who it was, but it was going back up to Spark Tower after they had died initially, way at the end of the game, to get, um, to get Flash. The one encounter in Sprout Tower... Scyther. Oh my gosh. I'd be curious to see if that Scyther had been anywhere else. Yeah, it was fantastic. So Terra uh, has joined Cruel in finding both the Wobbuffet and the Dunsparce. And Cruel has found a Love Ball. So that begs the question, what does Love Ball got to do with it? The silence is just Miz plotting his revenge on me. The physical pain that it is causing. <laughs> <laughs> that is, but that is skip loom information on Cruel's side. It's on a mandatory trainer, so both players are gonna have that. Yep. And hey, look, there are wild lapras in Union Cave. Is this even randomized? Probably not. Wow, skip loom's in Union Cave somewhere. Probably bottom floor. I think it. I th I didn't get a good enough look. It was either Burn Tower or Tin Tower. Hopefully Burn. Checking Burn Tower for encounters is a lot better than checking, checking Union Cave. And, uh, hey, hey, there's a Primate on a required trainer. You know what that means, don't you? Are we talking Breed Strats? We are talking Breed Strats. Oh, the other thing to know was that that Skip Loom did have Endure. That is information for Row 5 Column 2 as well. Just have to be sure to find a low enough level, uh, low enough level skip loom to still have it. Now, cruel getting past the uh, slow poke well 14. It was a primate with fire punch, but he was able to deal with that pretty well. Uh, was burned by it, but it's not going to matter after the free heal from Kurt before heading into Azalea Gym. Ooh, we get right twin action. Ooh, opting for the right twin. Yeah, hey, beat me to it. I was going to ask you if you were left twin or right twin, but Cruel, obviously right twin here. We'll see if Terra takes the left twin. We might get a little extra information uh, for ourselves. Wow, right twin providing some nice uh, experience here for Articuno. Is that golem's going to be quad weak to that razor leaf? Doing right twin and left side. 
Gives us the old cross up. Look at that. Yeah, this Articuno switch for Cruel has been just magnificent so far. The type coverage has been great. I mean, it's a legendary, so the stats are going to be great by default, but just the type coverage of this Articuno has been absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. And the. To be fair, the Feraligator over on Terra's side, aside from being walled by the worst Zap Cannon luck I've ever seen, this Feraligator is not bad either. No, the, no, not at all. This Feraligator's move set is really solid. Now, Terra does see the uh, the Skiplum. He doesn't see the Endure though. Um, so hopefully, if he goes and catches the Skiplum, he does check its move set. So he does that way he can find that. Yeah, we have some uh, nine-tailed fox action over on cruel side, but uh, not a, really a problem there for Articuno. And we have frustration Gengar. You know, I'm pretty sure if any of the people who did commentary with me used frustration, it would be at max power. I know mine would. <laughs> that, that Gengar also had Psychic. That would... I would have liked to see what the rest of that Gengar's moveset was. That would have been something neat to find early on if, uh, if the rest of its moveset was good. I missed TM-49. Ooh. Solar Beam. Tear, not going to be happy to see that one when he gets there. Nope, he already has it. All right, so we have a question in the chat. Uh, do trainers compute everything at the Pokemon's default happiness level? That I'm actually not sure about. That's actually a fantastic question. So we're gonna go with definitely, maybe. Tara gonna go ahead and sell that rich, creamy nugget, and we're gonna see Rival 2. And now, and, and now, thanks to me, you will never, ever be able to pick up another nugget in a Pokemon game without thinking of Rich and Creamy, will you? Never. It, it's, it will always be a Rich Creamy nugget now. <laughs> and we are going to get left twin strats from Terra, so we're getting all of the information. Wow, we've got Kinesis Haunter over on rival side. So far, Kinesis and Safeguard, so no threat on the Haunter. And uh, we have Seeking and Para, so Left Twin actually has the much less deadly Pokemon. Right Twin had the more experience. And the, But the, uh, the other thing to take away from this, the important thing to both runners is that the other didn't get any information. None of the Pokemon on either twin was of any use as far as information goes. Yeah, that is true. So I, I kind of wanted to see, you know, Pokemon information come down to left twin versus right twin, but unfortunately, nothing happened. Ooh, there's a Mary, so that's some flaffy information as well, although we already have the skip loom, so we don't necessarily need that. The Marie might the Marie might actually come in handy if they uh if that skip loom ends up being something like a ten percent encounter slot. Terra's gonna get a good look at uh Bugsy finally. Terra has actually closed the gap rather nicely on uh on Cruel now. And in addition to Mary, we have Ampharos here as well. So we've got the one, we've got the three. Unfortunately we need the two. If he finds a Flaffy in this forest, I'm gonna call shenanigans. Just outright shenanigans, all three in the forest. All right, next person who says shenanigans. Hey, what's that place you like to go to with all the stuff on the walls? Oh yeah, you mean shenanigans? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I love when, I will, I'm glad I'm getting your references. 
<laughs> I'm also glad you're getting my references. Dealing with the puns, but enjoying the references, we're having a good time. You know what the best part about this is? It's enjoying the puns, enjoying the references, and oh yeah, not wearing pants. Okay. <laughs> what? You do commentary with pants on? I don't think my neighbors would like me with my patio door open and not wearing pants. Oh. I mean, shorts. What were you thinking I was going for? I don't know. Disregard. This is... This, this is taking a turn. Let's... Let's go back to the Ilex Forest here. Cruel finding a sacred ash. Sacred ash percent? Now he's going to opt to skip a headbutt here. I can't imagine that Terror is going to skip a headbutt himself. Um, just as an extra move. Uh, something to deal with anything that... Maybe he runs into a Blissey or something that, you know, resists his plethora of special moves. But we're never gonna stop with Sweet Scent. Alright, so we are on Route 34, so uh, it is gonna say something to take a look at what happens here once we get out of Golden Run, because the eight trainers on Route 35 is a uh, is a square is a corner square so take a look at if we're going to do that now or if we're going to wait a little bit uh once we have a higher level pokemon to make it go faster also Firo information for um uh tear 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 tear's the name i was looking for tear Now that defeat eight trainers on 35 is in a really good spot, uh, considering call one and row five at this point are pretty free, uh, given that Cruel knows about Endure. Yep, so Cruel gonna go ahead and pick up Kenya, which is going to allow us to get um, TM50, and it's not a Toad, it is a Sneasel. Darn, I thought we were gonna go three for three. And look at this timing on Cruel, setting his time to 11.23 and showing up the bug catching contest at the exact perfect time. That's incredible. That's actually an amazing, amazing setup there. It's all in the timing. I, I could not have pulled that one off. But we've got a Charizard here as our first uh, Pokemon, and we have an Iron Tail, which is going to be super effective against the Ice-type Articuno. Now the question is, is a 15 Charizard win the contest? There's another normal type. Uh, Porygon 2 could be, a, could be useful. I don't know that he's gonna want to catch this unless he's gonna find something else. Yeah, he's gonna in. catch it for the normal type, but there's no way he keeps Digital Duck here. Now, yeah, the the perfect timing. Um, he could have he could have set his clock a little bit later to end up uh, getting there after after those clock rolls over. Uh, the last thing you want to do is set it too early and then have to wait around for the bug catching contest. But yeah, other than that, it doesn't really... It, it just looks really cool right now. Yeah. Also, we have another normal type there with a Stantler, so that's at least two normal types. Well, three anyway, because we have the Dunsparce. And hi, Victory Bell. How are you? Little Bear. We have a Little Bear sighting. Little Bear! I did actually... We were talking about the, the Digital Duck, and uh, it does register in the Pokedex, even if you don't take it out of the bug catching contest so that is a bit of an oversight that we had so he does still have the Charizard to turn in Leo that's uh, see I love that mechanic that's great you know, we're going to catch this victory bell as well to continue up with the 30 Pokemon owned uh, 
Yeah. See, interesting thing is he didn't go ahead and use the time in the bug catching contest to um, to go get the TMs and stuff from the from there. And we do have a bug catching contest win for Cruel, and that is going to be marked off. So uh, Terra definitely knows where Cruel is at right now. No, it's definitely a fair bit of expert planning on Cruel's part, uh, along with a little bit of luck with just how well it worked out. That teleport coming into play very nicely. It's, it's kind of like fly, right? Yeah, early enough fly. It saves him an entire trip back down 35. Yeah, but I, I mean, I love the fact that you know we we've got uh, we've got teleport strats, so breed strats incoming. Uh, you are desperate to see breed strats at this point. I'm desperate to see meme strats at at this point. Cruel getting a start on a. Uh... On Whitney's gym, finding an onyx on the Snubble Girl. And of course, when it's not on the card. Naturally. Terra's heading straight for Whitney, rather than heading up 35 yet. Well, he set his clock a little later than Krill, so he's not able to do the bug catching contest quite yet. And tear going into Whitney's gym saved you from another one of my bad puns, so be thankful. I I shudder to think what it was. That's the I'm absolutely traumatized by doing commentary with you at this point. <laughs> and funny, you were so excited when I volunteered. Whitney though. Whitney is lacking in the threat department, it looks like. He's going to take the, uh, the switch out here to heal up the, uh, the Articuno, though. The Iron Tail from the Drowsy did a bit more damage than uh, I think any of us were expecting. Yeah, so, so far there's Drowsy rocking Iron Tail and Thunder. The coughing for that having some Thunder, thunder Punch, so yeah. Um... The threat level of the Pokemon themselves, not crazy. The threat level of the moves, however. Also, Rocker Bob throwing a typical Rocker Temper Tantrum. Nothing surprising there. Smokescreen for TM45. Absolutely the most useful thing we could have seen. Well, look at it this way. You do need a Pokemon with four moves sharing its type. Smokescreen is a normal type move. Cruel's gonna get juked by the blue chick before getting the squirt bottle. Hashtag Team Blue. Yep, then we're gonna see all the trainers on 35 now. Let's see if Terra fights them on his way north. Because we could be looking at a continued uh, continued simultaneous progression here. Granted that Terra is also, does still have to go and uh, talk to the flower shop girl's sister. Yep, unfortunately, Cruel, not quite enough time here is uh, it does get there early, so he's probably going to go ahead and <laughs> he's two minutes early. So we're going to go ahead and, and kill some of the things on here on Route 35 first. There's a Polyrath for Cruel, so while Terra has Slowpoke, uh, at the very least Slowpoke information, Cruel does have Polyrath information now. For alligator trying to learn splash, we in there. We've met. We've achieved the dream, folks. See, I just need a Pokemon at some point. You know, in the actual game, 
that literally only learns four moves. It needs to burn Splash, Thrash, Flail, and Outrage, and just be the Temper Tantrum Pokemon. And of course, because it's not on the card, we have Scyther information as well. So the interesting thing here about um, the eight trainers in Route 35, if you go through here at night, you have, there are a total of nine trainers you can fight out here because the uh, police officer becomes active at night. It does save you the trouble of going down and fighting the other trainer by the TM if you don't feel like cycling all the way down there. But you probably want the TM. Well, that all depends. If um, if 20 TMs is on the card or if there's a random TM on the card, absolutely. I think I think our runners today might actually go ahead and skip that TM. Um, it's not... It doesn't seem like it might be all that necessary, but we could see them go for it. I think um, I think both their move sets though should be good enough to carry them. Oh, absolutely. And uh, let's see what Tear goes ahead and finds in the bug catching contest. We know that we have Ditch Old Luck. We know we have Stant there. We know we have Victory Bell. We know we have Charizard. We still have a multitude of slots left to play with though, like a Primeape. Oh no. I've already made the joke about Prime I can't make it again. No, I know, but it's 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 making itself known. It is. It's telling us it's it's telling us like, hey, I'm here. Cocoon is actually a very interesting catch here because, you know, um Beedrill and Butterfree isn't on the card, although Terra did give up on a Weedle earlier, so. He's gonna give up on the Kakuna here as well. And a baby gator. And there is the stamina nose. We have some legendary bird on legendary bird crime happening over on Cruel's side. Ice burb versus zap burb. Cruel gonna go ahead and opt for the police officer. Tear gonna go ahead and pick up the items here in the bug catching contest. Gonna get a revival herb, and uh, oh, gonna hope the Stantler is enough to win. That got got the job done. It did. Oh, Tear picking another random trainer, and. Uh, we're going to have Cruel going ahead and checking some of the Pokemon here, or at least getting a PC heal on Articuno. It looks like we're just getting the PC heal. But we're going to see, uh, that's not a good Charizard move set. Terra's finally going to get to the, uh, Oh, we got a Jinx! Well, there goes one minute of time. Kappa. The run officially blessed. Oh, we got the mirror match happening. Oh, looks like Tear is opting to go down for the TM. <laughs> so is Cruel, actually. Well. And just for good measure, gonna defeat the last guy, too. Which did have Dunsparce information if they didn't have it already. having an Ariados as well. It doesn't really help out with anything. And yet again, another thing that could have been on the card but wasn't. So speaking of things that aren't on the card that should have been, did we ever figure out the connection between Ferd and Kadabra? You know, I asked and I never got an answer. 
I mean, because aside from arbitrarily putting things on a card, I mean, unless they're going with they both have big tails. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to do a little more research on that uh, when I get a moment. Yep, but we have, ooh, Machoke as your Sudowuda. Yeah, see, Team Floofy Tails. <laughs> Ravine knows what's up. Oh, Terra seeing the Thunderbolt on the on the Articuno now. And dying a little on the inside. He could be, but I, I think... I, I don't think he's too worried about it. The, the Feraligator is still really solid. He's out of Sacred Fire, though, so it's really, really slowing him down. He is going to Elixir the Sacred Fire PP back. So uh, we are here now in Ecratique City. You have more Pokeballs being bought by Cruel, more Super Potions. Uh, unfortunately, didn't buy Burn Heal. We don't have to. There's no Blaine in this run. And time to see what the Kimono Girls have to offer. We'll start with a Pidgey. Oh, to answer the chat's question, Meowth and Mankey are together because they're both one-stage evolutions that evolve at 28. And there's also version exclusives. Also, we do have a Bug Steel type sighting, which makes me happy. If not Scizor, but Fortress will be a nice close second. Eh, you and your scissor. Oh, says the guy who has a shuckle emote. Haters gonna hate, what can I say? Hey, I love shuckle. Like, I, I love defensive Pokemon. Shuckle was fantastic. Cruel's gonna look to heal off that paralysis. He doesn't have anything to clear it though, so he's gonna end up having to take the center here. Or never mind, he's gonna go buy go buy something. Better idea. Yeah, shows you, doesn't it? I sassed him. I shouldn't have sassed him. I'm sorry, Cruel. You know, there, there's another pun there, but I'm going to hold my tongue. What is that banana? I don't... That's mine. Oh. <laughs> well, no, yeah, alright. It's a face-palming banana. Would you like yeah. the story behind the face-palming banana? I uh, you have to tell me you have to tell me after the race, man. Fair enough. I am you interested. Did see in evolution. Uh, the Sun Kern that we caught over on Cruel Side did evolve into a Sun Flora, so uh, that's going to count towards the thirty plus Pokemon owned. Oddly enough, looking at the card again, we have yet to see an Eevee evolution. Wait, hold on, hold on. You're wearing a cardigan. It's very comfy. Am I doing commentary with Mr. Rogers? Possibly, neighbor. Welcome to the land of make-believe. Oh, did we see a Jolteon on 29? My mistake. My mistake. So we've seen one. My apologies. We have seen one. 
Cruel is going to get Surf. That is going to round out that Articuno's moveset rather nicely. That yep. should be uh, should be the end of Metal Claw. There it goes. Goodbye, Metal Claw. We hardly knew you. We got to know it. We got to know it way too well. Terra has now reached the uh, Machoka Wudo. The Machoka Wudo. Or Pseudo Choke or something. I don't know. Pseudo Choke. Oh, wow. The Skip Loom in the Burn Tower. Fast Encounter. And it used Endure, which is fantastic. That's two for the price of one. It's always nice when you don't have to go back and check the Pokemon's move set when it's since it already showed you what you needed to know. Yes, how dare you be efficient, game? How dare you? That is going to tell Terra what he needs to know about that, though. He's going to be able to. Put two and two together rather quickly on the Skip Loom having Endure. Or wow. one of the moves Let's on that goal. One of the, yeah, either Skip Loom or Flaffy, one of the two. Oops, we have some more Kimono Girl oh. fighting happening. Hi, that's, that's Raikou information. Cruel's rival has Raikou. That that's that's actually pretty interesting here. Like so Cruel's rival had Raikou. Tear's rival too had Firo. Now while uh, I don't think Cruel saw the Hoot Hoot either, did he? I don't believe so. So in that event, both of their rivals have given them information for a goal on row four that the other may not necessarily have. I know for a fact Tear does not have. Suicun, Raiko, Raiku, or uh, Entei info. Yep, and now we're gonna fall through the floor. Kuri go down the hall. And we've moved on to Tiny Tunes, okay. When Terra gets there, we'll find out what the uh, the legendary beasts are. We'll we'll look to chat f to help us out with that one, unless heaven forbid it's actually Pokemon Cries I recognize. Yeah, I mean, and we do have to encounter Sleepcoon on Route 42 in theory, so. So the other option that um, Terra could go for if he does not find any information about the beasts is he the goal does count. If you catch one of the two roamers or the static Suicune sprite in Tin Tower in the late game. So he's gonna hope that he doesn't have to resort to that. If we've gotten that far, then why haven't we done breed strats? Because Tin Tower is still a better option than breed strats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep advocating for it. If in for all, you're gonna get an upgrade. Goodbye, Crab Hammer. Hello, Surf. And he's trading out. He's trading out the improved crit chance for the hundred percent accuracy. Definitely, one hundred percent the better play. Also, can I uh, update my art request? Uh, can we have the Indiana for alligator also surfing while doing the fine whip stuff? And there's some butterfree information. I've got the Indiana Jones theme stuck in my head now. Oh, Tear finds the Skip Bloom. So he's probably got to go ahead and catch this. And there's the Endure, so he now knows it too. Polyrath is actually just south of Ecruteague City. That is a fantastic spot. And then Pidgey is in a horrible spot. 
Pidgeotto's in a terrible spot. Yeah, not so bad. My my restream lagged out when he got to Pidgeot. Uh, either Burned or Tin Tower and Dark Cave. For, oh my god, Raikou. M Mount Mortar and Mount Silver. That is horrendous. Horrendous locations for Raikou. Yeah, we have some Lucius over here, and uh, we have a Dunsparce on Rival 3, so if we didn't catch it already in the ca in uh, Union Cave, we would have had it now. Yeah, boo that man. Boo him and his puns. There's only one pun master here. Exactly, and I don't like to share. I will... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say I didn't look look to see your thing light up. Cruel uh, making his way through uh, Morty's gym rather easily as we're about to get uh, the cries of our legendary beast here. So we'll have to see if we can figure this out. All right, quiet on the set. That Suicune's Aerodactyl. That's not bad. I didn't catch with the other, the other two. You were talking during the during the first one. God. No, I wasn't. Uh, on my end, you were. Oh I, yeah, I but no, the, but no, Raiko was definitely Poliwag. Yeah, true. It could be Poliwag or Ditto. They share the same cry. It's going to be like that episode of the anime where everyone gets his polywag, but it's polywhirl because the swirls went in the other direction. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Ooh. No, bear! Oh, I thought you were talking about Ravine with her seeking enlightenment. No, I didn't even see that. But yeah, anyway. Bear! There we go. <laughs> I blame Keys for all of this. <laughs> Damn it, Keys. So we'll have to see if, um... So the information Cruel got on Raiko is not good. We'll have to see if one of them gets information that points us to a better location at this point. Well, the locations can't get much worse now, can they? It... What? I'm just... I'm, I'm thinking about this with, like, the... the legendary beasts, like... Mount Mortar is such a horrendous place for that. Yeah, I mean, we could get lucky and it could be right on the inside. That is true. Or we could get super lucky and one of them could find one of the roamers. And we, we have, have another evolution here. Also, guess what Tear ran into again? Oh no. Oh, that Kingdra yes. again. <laughs> yes! It's bad. And it has an unlearned zap cannon. No. And the best part about this Kingdra is look at that smug look on its face. Like, it just knows. <laughs> it knows what it did. It does know what it did. Cruel gonna get the phone number for the lass. Go Here ahead. We go. We go. So we have had uh, every keys of meme so far. I think the only thing so. missing. I think the only thing missing is Baby Jinx. 
Yeah, we've had Blessings, we've had Bear, we've had Wiggly Woo. Yep. And uh, to answer your question, uh, there is no uh, minimum for puns for being a commentator. Just uh, accept the fact that if you're working with me, I do all the puns. Yeah, if you're working with TGE, you just kind of survive the puns. Mm -hmm. There has been one race where I, uh, I've been commentary for, it wasn't Pokemon, where I actually was ending up playing the, uh, the straight man and the guy I was working with was doing the commentary. Uh, the, the bad jokes. And, uh, cruel um, Wooper is a ground type. You have to use that razor leaf, not the Thunderbolt you wanted to. Yeah, I wonder if that was uh, maybe just a misclick. Perhaps. I mean, I've done it before, too. Just <laughs> T-Ball. Oh, you're ground already, aren't you? Yeah, I always forget Wooper's ground type. He's heading straight for the lighthouse, so he is going to route Mineral Badge in. I mean, you might as well. Yeah, see, I always forget that Wooper is ground type because I I, I think of, you know, Gen 5 with uh, Tim Pole and Seismitoad, where Tim Pole is water only until you get the Palpitoad Seismitoad evolutions. I'm actually looking looking at this card again. Not my card again, but looking at the <laughs> card once, once again. <laughs> Mineral Badge is not in a great spot, actually. They don't they don't have anything aside from Breed Strats for Mankey or Meow. And I think Cruel's only seen one Eevee evolution. True, but he's got the number for a last. So writing the Mineral Badge, you know, there's six badges that you need to get anyway. So you might as well route it in, because you're going to have to go to Cyan Wood anyway. This could serve to also get him some extra information here. As he has like now seen 90, 90 Pokemon, Pokemon scene. And hey look, Team Floofy Tail. Before my next commentary shift, I'm going to figure out what the connection between Ferret and Kadabra actually is. Another Raikou. <laughs> uh, the game is just telling Cruel, hi, I'm going to give you all the information and put it in a horrible spot. And if you have not done so already, as you can see, Miz has been gracious enough to put the links to both of our runners in the chat. Please give both of our runners a follow if you haven't already. Show them a little love and support. Yeah, I saw the I saw the Randroid pop up and I was like, you know, we need to give the runners a shout out here. Shout out to both these guys. They're doing a fantastic job. It's really close still. Cruel does have a little bit of a story progression lead though. But there was a go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Please. Terra was a Terra was a little bit closer, but that that Kingdra walling him again, giving him a little bit of a hiccup there. My, <laughs> this is the part where I make the joke that my parents thought the same thing. <laughs> oh, we are not after dark. I can't continue that joke. Oh, man. Uh, if you can't take a jab at yourself, who can you take a jab at, right? Oh, absolutely. I play, I take jabs at myself all the time. Who's calling me? <laughs> Cruel getting the phone call from the last. Good time to call the last back and get that phone number out of there. Gotta love it, right? Oh, 
also the powers that be are going to hate me for this. I had to remember where I had it written down, so I had to go find it. Um, we took a vote on the bot here for Randomania, and the Randroid was the name that ended up winning. However, I have a, a other name for it, and you know, I, I at least know the guy behind the code of the Randroid hates it when I bring this up. Um, so that is not the Randroid. That is uh, Randoist Oliver Botman the Third. God, Shucky is an exploding jump bluff. Because why not? And Tear now also seeing some Flareon, but yes, Randoist Oliver Botman the Third, aka the Randroid. And I, I love that its initials are Rob as well. I'm glad somebody picked up on that. But Terra seeing that Flareon does give him, uh, does give him two EV evolution infos. Uh, he'll have to hope that they're in decent spots. That would give him a nice easy path to route, uh, to row two if he can get that. There you go. Well, there's, we're halfway there. I didn't realize that was on a wild. I thought that was still as a trainer. The trainer encounter info. I was looking over at Cruel side. I just see a Flareon on Terra side. My apologies. Terra gonna see the Wiggly Woo though. Yep. The last has the Wiggly Woo. So if you want to call the last, it's a required Wiggly Woo. Yeah. Why not? I'll get a. There we go. Didn't do it for the first one. I'll, I'll spam it for you guys as well. Terra forgetting that you do need to be off the route of the trainer before you call them. Yeah. So we are going to see some strength here, and uh, we're going to teach to that Ampharos, and we are going to make our way to Chuck's gym. Or to Chuck's fight. That's the one I'm looking for. Fight. Fight. Yeah, if he doesn't unmark the call, alas, in the next couple of moments, we are going to need to unmark that. I will wait until it gets to Olivine before I do that. And the bike shop call decides to stall us out a little further. So what you're saying is uh, the game is trolling, no? Game's <laughs> kind of reminding him of a few things. So we we did go ahead and unmark that since uh since the goal was not met. Hopefully he does think to stop and call her back. Well, well, shouldn't he call her Danielle? Because that was her name. Tara's gonna head up the lighthouse uh, first before, uh, before calling her. I really, really hope he calls her. I hope he realizes there is some bureau information for Cruel. And that is, it's not necessarily a required trainer, but it, it, it is a required trainer because six badges is on the card. So, uh, yeah, we do have the Firo information, so that is uh, good news for Cruel. And with Chuck down, that's going to give Cruel access to fly.
Oh, so the egg's not going to hatch. We're seeing where we're going to teach fly to. We're going to have to turn that sneeze on in a bit, too. Tear going back to the phone. Going to call the last properly this time. There we go. Goal has now been met. Properly marked. And uh, here we are. We're flying to Goldenrod City. So we are going to, in a minute here, once we head on over to Mahogany Town, we are going to have access to our first bingo because TM10 Hidden Power is at the Lake of Rage. True, Cruel did not fight Yusin while he was down in Cyanwood City. So he's going to have to go back before he does the encounter Suicune goal. Assuming he wants to do the encounter Suicune goal. And the Dump Sparse now has four normal type moves, so he's met that goal. And uh, there's the Raikou data for Tear as well. He's also going to be disappointed to see the location of the Raikou. Bill's, uh, Bill's Eevee has taken on some fire type properties. Darn stray dogs. But uh, Cruel's gonna go ahead and turn in, turn in Kenya to get TM50. Nice little free gift for him. I like free gifts. Free gifts are always good. I enjoy them too. I mean, who doesn't, right? Ooh, we're gonna try the Mount Mortar trip here. We're looking for Raikou. However, Poliwhirl, not a bad option. Poliwhirl would be a faster option if he, if he goes and buys a Water Stone, then going back and trying to find the Poliwrath. Yeah, absolutely. By picking up the Poliwhirl here, he just has to go purchase that Water Stone, which is going to make things a little bit easier. And I do like this choice of his going through Mount Mortar to try and, you know, progress towards Mahogany Town, but at the same time, see if you can get lucky with the Raikou. That's sort of a Suicune, right? If only that counted that way, right? It'd be fantastic. That'd be such a great find. It absolutely would be, and we do have some nine-tailed fox action here as uh, Tear is zigzagging his way through the water on his way to Cyanwood City. And there's our second evolution. so this trip to Mount Mortar is paying dividends for Cruel. He's going to pick up the Espeon, he picked up the Poliwhirl, so again, this was a good trip to Mount Mortar. Didn't do what he came here for, but it's like when you go to the store for milk, get everything else but the milk. You know, you come home with a box of ring dings, you know, two pounds of steak, three packs of frozen french fries, and speaking of Suicune, <laughs> there you go. Who needs to find the Reiko when you find a Suicune? Yeah. Unfortunately, it was in Mount Mortar and not on Route 42. So I wonder, actually, what that's going to say to Tear. Is he going to think he found the Reiko? And just, I don't know, that's weird. Like, that could be weird later on. And look, here's the Metapod for the Butterfree goal. Everything is just coming up cruel right now. Yeah, no, that, the Encounter Sweet Cone on 42 would be would be the uh, static story Suicune, which will require Cruel to go back to Cyanwood City if he's going to if he's going to go for that goal. Also, we have Dynamic Punch Metapod. 
I, I, I can't imagine that Cruel does not go back for for the Usain fight. Uh, in, that encounter is in a pretty good column for him. Not only, I mean, not even just the uh, the row four section, but I mean, you're talking. He's got Polyrath info. He's got Butterfree info. Yeah, he's got them both. He's a, a Waterstone and a level away from both of those. And then, not to mention, thirty owned is pretty much free, and TM ten is free. All right, so we, we, we got a little bit of overlap time here. We're going to make our way up to Lake of Rage in a minute. And so I know the last time we had come here, I, I asked the question of favorite Pokemon. So we can't ask that because we know your answer, we know my answer. But now I have to ask, favorite generation of Pokemon games, or favorite Pokemon game in general? Your choice. Favorite, favorite Pokemon game in general? We're looking at it. It's always been Pokemon Crystal. I might be slightly biased with my answer. I have a feeling it's... I have a feeling it's gonna be Leaf Green. You would be correct. You don't say. <laughs> hey, I fully admit I'm biased. <laughs> I also fully admit I, with my favorite evolution, I'm also biased. My favorite evolution has always been Flareon. I don't know why, it's just so fluffy. It is fluffy. I'm not gonna lie though, um, like, during the first generation, I'm sitting there like, we have a Leaf Stone, we have a Pokemon that involves three, why isn't there a Leafy on? And I have been, I was clamoring for one forever when they finally came up with one and I was just so happy. There we go, Cruel has made his way, looks like he's about to make his way to TM10 here. Which, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that means we have got our first bingo. So let's take a look at this, um, take a look for a, a route to finish here, actually. Cruel has a path. Yeah, I think Cruel's path is to, is to border in the box. And look, there's the shiny giraffe rig, so if we didn't get the dunce for the wild cup, we got the giraffe rig. <laughs> and he's gonna go ahead and probably catch this giraffe rig here, because in the normal types. Uh, because giraffe rig is normal psychic, or he might be trying to just, you know, level up the metapod here as well. I don't think we have I don't think we have any trade information, but I think Cruel's path to finish. He does have Fero info. So I think he goes row two, row four, row five, call one, call five. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that would be you know, that would be my thought process here. And if we happen to run into a manky or meowth that, you know, just makes bottom left to top right super easy. And Tear is remembering to fight you, uh, you seen here. Yeah, this is weird. Um, Cruel's trying to teleport away, f or trying to kill the giraffe rig. He could have caught it for a normal type. Yeah, but I think he was more concerned with leveling up the Metapod, and Cruel opting to, Tear opting to not fight uh, you seen. So both players have avoided you seeing. So by stopping by the Pokemon Center and healing here, are we getting some mineral badge action? I'd, I'd have to imagine he's about to make his way up the tower for uh, for uh, the matchup with Jasmine. And there is Tear's second evolution, the Wild Jolteon. If I had moderator privileges for the chat, 
What would you need me to do? No, you wouldn't do it because I would purge Pika Lax and his puns. Okay, I can do that. that. <laughs> nah, Cruel's gonna Cruel is gonna make his way back up the lighthouse to set up for that mineral badge fight. Oh man. You're a scholar and a gentleman. I have to keep the people I'm working with happy. And if you having to sit through my horrible puns and all you ask me to do is purge Pika for five seconds, I can do that. So once Cruel gets his mineral badge, that's gonna give him both the mineral badge and the six the six badges goal. He really would just be a a short ways away from getting that getting to a five bingos here. Yeah. Uh, see, and these are cards that I love because with having no good way to get the center square, it, it makes you think about your routing because the center square allows for so much to happen. With you don't have access to that, it does make for fascinating routing decisions. So he's gonna go for switch strats on the metapod here, rather well, than um. Yeah, let's say he has access to the experience share now. I can I can kind of see where he's going with this. Um, there's no reason for him to worry about um getting the experience share because he's got nothing else he really needs to level up. You're not incorrect there, and we have a digging arcanine, which is hilarious. So let's see if Terra goes ahead, go ahead, goes ahead and catches the giraffe rig. Bear. Oh. Bear. And if he wanted to catch the giraffe rig, he kind of critted. <laughs> Quote, kind of critted. Kind of critted. <laughs> Oops, all crits. Except when you need them. If so, the Metapod did get the level, so at the end of this uh, this fight, we are going to go ahead and have ourselves some Butterfree and... Matic, get off the screen. Uh, just a friendly reminder on the screen uh, that Matic sucks. <laughs> Not bad for somebody who... Um, you know, jumped into this a couple of weeks ago completely random, picking up on all the memes. Yeah, I gotta hand it to you. You're doing pretty well with that. So, Cruel getting three goals for the price of one. Six badges, mineral badge, and butter free. I think his, uh, I think his path is all but set. He needs six, uh, six goals to finish at this point. Yeah, I definitely imagine we're going to see uh, Polyrath happen. Uh, we're probably going to see 30-plus uh, Pokemon owned. If we fly back to um, Cyanwood City, that tells us uh, Suicune, but who knows? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's heading for, he's heading for Flash to have an easy move to teach for the four uh, non-TM, non-damaging moves. Yeah, Terra gonna go ahead and pick up Hidden Power, and that's gonna give Terra his first bingo. And you know how much I want to see a Meowth or a Mankey in Sprout Tower right now? Oh, that would that would be fantastic. We do have information for a trade poke now, though. And there is the Bell Sprout. That could change how Cruel wants to go about this. Yep, Tear also going to go ahead and he's going to pick up TM50 right now as well. So uh, Tear getting his two static TMs out the way. Cruel is six known goals away from finishing. Oh, Bellsprout, super easy spots.
Yeah, that could really change the way he wants to do this. Well, because Trade of Pokemon gives him now Column 2. I think, though... Yeah, I think, I think his play might be... Yeah, if he trades a Pokemon, he can actually forego... Uh, forego the 30 Pokemon owned and the Polyrath. Yeah, we would just move to Call 1, Call 2, Row 2, 4, and 5. Yeah, so getting that Bellsword information was, was uh, huge there. So he could now do it in five goals. I can name that tune in five notes. You're, you're dating yourself a bit there, TGE. <laughs> yeah, but you're dating yourself for recognizing it. Listen, everybody knows I'm old. Yeah, I'm not that much younger than you. Call 3 is still... still inaccessible because we don't have Meowth and Mankey info. Breed strats. So, we could... <laughs> If, if we're desperate, yeah. Well, that's so the I thing. Think... I'm always desperate. Yeah, so I think Cruel's got a very easy path now. Um, just call one, call two, rows two, four, and five. Oh, yeah, Flary, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Flash here. Uh, and that's gonna do it. Heal Bell, you know, Agility, Flash, yeah, that Flareon coming up with four non-damaging, non-TM moves. I haven't been keeping track of how many normal types he has as he finds a normal type in Sprout Tower. Well, let's see, we know we had the two from the bug catching contest, plus the Dunsparce is three. Dodria we know makes four. As the Do as the Dodrio puts him on a timer, he catches it anyway. But <laughs> it's always frustrating when you're trying to catch something. You see Parish Song come out. Tear now on uh, Tear now on the Jasmine fight. He's looking to pick up his sixth badge and his mineral badge as well. He sees the bear. And going through Sprout Tower here at the beginning of the game would have been nice because look at all this experience I see right here. Well, that would have been huge for Tear back and in the And there's the Meowth information. I, I'm done. I can't even. We found a Meowth. <laughs> I'm so done. We found a Meowth in Sprout. And it bit me out while we're at it. I told you Sprout Tower holds all the information. All right. So... Things have changed once again. He could finish without going back to going back to fight you, Seam. Mm-hmm. Because he can. All right. So Meowth is everywhere as well. So let's see. He could pick up Meowth. Then he could get. He could evolve the Poliwhirl. That would give him BLTR and Call 3, Call 2, Call 1, and Row 5. That's... Yep. So we did determine that uh, Meowth was over here in Cherry Grove. But so that's... Oh my gosh. Apparently so is my car. So is my car. The joke behind that is I got a new vehicle recently and it's the same color as Charizard. My sister, who was 15, was with me when she, we were buying. She's like, oh, I want to go. I'm like, okay, not a problem. She sees the car, sees me purchasing, and she looks and goes, so you, you're calling this the Charizard, right? And I now own the Charizard. Mm -hmm. The Charizard. Yeah. I'll post some pictures in the uh, in the Discord next time I get a chance to. 
Which, by the way, if you haven't done so already, join the Pokemon Cinco Bingo Crystal Discord. And it's hey, there. there would be uh, Entei. Would have been be useful if he uh, actually that gets him that goal. He's gonna go ahead and master ball that. Might as well. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't cost you anything but an animation. If in, we're getting all kinds of random doggos, and it looks like Meowth is in the ten percenter. Cruel switching his team around doesn't want to be uh, doesn't want to be caught unable to run from these Charizards anymore. Nope, and Terra doing some surfing to the east of Mahogany Town. Now, did I miss Terra not picking up Sweet Sun? I don't know. I kind of always just take that for a given, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. I'm trying to figure out what we're looking for here. He's gonna see the Polyrath information. It looks like we're gonna go for Polyrath here. We're gonna fly over to uh, Ecrotique and go south of it. Cruel is struggling to find this meow. Struggling. Offer up prayers to Saint Ruglin, the patron saint of the struggle. And you tell me I make horrible jokes. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Danke. Yeah, shout out to Paradoxical Remedy and uh, his Dally Bird. I mean, it's a Dally Bird, it's a thing. Hey, Stantler's on this route normally. Game? Yeah, is this even randomized? Fred? There is the Polyrath. Oh wait, this isn't Z1 or SMB3. I can't make the Fred joke, can I? Nah, I, I, I don't think that'll land with, uh, with as many people. I know it doesn't land with me. I have no idea what you just said. Uh, F. Coughlin, or Fred, is the creator of the Zelda 1 randomizer and the Super Mario Bros. 3 randomizer, so whenever everything, anything something vanilla in those games, we just yell out his name. Fair See? Enough. Insane Swirl gets it. And there's the Meowth. Hey! That's right! You see, we usually, we have our own person to blame for everything. Uh, exclamation mark, Lucky, please. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna blame Lucky here because I'm here and the hashtag is blame TGE. You can always blame Lucky for everything. You can also always blame TGE and that meow is gonna give Cruel 6 normal type Pokemon as well, so that's gonna give us column 1. In addition to having bottom left, top right, row 5. We have And column 3. So yeah, actually all he has to do Cruel just heading back for the Waterstone to evolve the Polyrath, and he is going to win this race. No, no, yeah, but evolving the Polyrath will give us the fourth bingo. See, one, two, three. Yeah, will give us the fifth bingo. Yeah, that's all we got to do. And look, there's the Wild Raikou, because why not? Because you can never have enough memes. Nope, that was on the man. first floor, too, by the way. It was. You called and that. that. Is the Polyrath, so that's going to do it here. We have got a column one, a column three, a row two, a row five, and a bottom left to top right. Big congratulations to Cruel for taking the win here. Nicely done. We'll see if we can get a... See if we can get these guys in for an interview real quick.
see, this was a, an absolutely fascinating race here because everything was routed around not playing the center square, and then, oh, hey, look, surprise me out information. Yeah, I know, right? That was, <laughs> I wasn't even planning to hit that optional, but that was very lucky. So, Cruel, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so, we sat here and we rerouted your ending three or four times with just <laughs> all the information you were stumbling into. Yeah, uh, same here. Uh, when I saw the bell sprout, I was like, and its location, I was like, okay, well, at least I now know I, what route I have to take. From that point on, I had a set route. Uh, granted, I was still planning to go call five at that point, take the trade Pokemon with the bell sprout, but then. What do you know? Because I forget an escape rope, forgot to buy an escape rope and run into an optional, I find Meowth and that's it. So we um we saw early on or about let me rephrase, the midway point. Uh your your rival had Reiko. Yes. Um earlier on we uh Tear's rival two had uh actually we're gonna get Terra in here real quick. I love this. I have the power to move people now. <laughs> uh, so Terra's rival two had Firo, and then you had Raiko on on rival three. Now, granted, it didn't matter because both of them were available on mandatory trainers later on. But when you checked the uh, the locations on the Raiko, let g give us your re reaction. Uh, I was like, well. That's, uh, that's not going to help me much. It uh, was not in the position I was hoping it didn't matter in the end, but yeah, no, I was a little bit, a little bit disappointed with that. All right, so we've got Terry in here with us now. And um, uh, TG, do you, wanna, do you have any questions you want to ask? Take the lead, my friend. It's all you. All right, fair enough. So Terry, I want to ask you, um, early on, you you had a fair bit of a struggle with the uh, the Kingdra in um, in Faulkner's gym. Uh, take us through take us through some of your uh, your thought process on that. Uh, I better not explain my thought process. <laughs> I better <laughs> don't talk about it. <laughs> I believe Fair. this stream is supposed to be uh, fa uh, family friendly. <laughs> Um, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I do want to ask you, so both of you had really good mains you were running. Uh, now, Terry, you ended up sticking with the Feraligator. It did That Feraligator was really good. And then, Cruel, you came across that Thunderbolt Articuno. Yeah, Thunderbolt Razor Leaf Teleport. I mean, I, first time it teleported away from me when I was trying to catch it, I was a little bit disappointed because I was like, Okay, this thing has really good moves. I mean, Thunderbolt plus Razor Leaf, and then the Metal Claw to just top it off. Like three good, three decent damaging moves. It's like, okay, well, I, I'm gonna main that, and then it teleported away. But at that point, I was like, I think I'm gonna keep looking here because that that thing is pretty good. We also had um. I also had a couple questions come in from the chat here. The first question um, is, Tear, did um, I might have missed it. Did you not pick up the Sweet Scent TM on your way to uh, Goldenrod? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> okay, I still we... don't know all the TM's locations. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. We we saw you we saw you walking uh, roaming around in the water, and we were just kind of curious because I I forgot if you had grabbed it or not. Um, the other big question from the chat goes back over to you, Cruel. Um, the clock timing for the bug catching contest. You could not have set that any more perfectly. Was it really that close? You set your clock to 1123, and at the 37 minute mark, you were walking into the bug catching oh, wow. contest. I, you hit I it within the minute. I had not even realized that. I mean, I knew I would be there at a point, or I generally, like, 37 minutes is more than enough time to get there. 
but it's also like generally I, I tend to be around Bugsy at like the, the 35 minute mark. Uh, because of, you know, early on trying to find a decent uh, main and whatnot. So I, w I hadn't even been paying attention to it. So, yeah, that's cool. I, I didn't even know. Actually, both of you guys were really close with it. Um, Tara was a couple of minutes early. Um, oh, his inter Tara's internet dropped on. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay, hey, cool. You're still here. Um, so Tara, Tara was within a couple of minutes. He was a couple of minutes early getting there, but we we were completely blown away by the fact that it it was maybe twenty seconds. Cool. <laughs> like, That's pretty funny. That's all I can say about it. That's really funny. I hadn't noticed it myself even. Uh, I mean, if I if I had been too early, I, I it would have been fine either way. I, I probably would have just gone back, killed a few trainers already, and, and gone for it. But yeah, no, I, I hadn't even realized it was actually basically on the dot. Um, so actually, another question for both of you guys. Um, you guys both opted to skip the... Um, the Usain fight. Were you guys both um, routing away from the encountering Suicune, or I, was it? Personally, I wasn't. I was actually. I had that in my route, but then you know I haven't had it in a in a in any of the bingos lately where I needed to go for it. So uh, you know I kind of just went full on muscle memory and flew out of there. And it wasn't only until after I had flown away that I realized, wait, I probably should have done that. And by that point, I was like, uh, you know what? I'll come back to it when, uh, when I'm a little bit further in, when that's one of the later things I have to do, because it's pretty quick later on anyway. And then, um, Tara, actually, it looked like you were, you were heading that direction. You looked like you were about to fight him, but you turned around. Yeah, I was thinking about to do that, and then... I decided against it and do bigger goats first. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, hmm. I think I've hit about every every note that I had. Um, I mean, it was it was interesting that you guys both found uh, you guys both found Wobbuffet and Dunsparce in Union Cave, and you both ended up coming across that information. Um. Yeah, I, I laughed a little bit when I saw the second one there. I was like, well, now I don't need that anymore, but that's kind of funny. Yeah, oh. And then, of course, the giraffe rig being the Gyarados. Yeah, that too. That was... Like, it would have been a guaranteed goal with this, uh, with this seed anyway. Just the combination of all three being in that obvious spot was kind of hilarious. That was, a, that was another thing I thought of was... um. You opted not to catch the shiny giraffe egg, needing six normals. Yeah, I probably should have. <laughs> as long as we're acknowledging that you should have. I mean, at the end of the day, I was kind of working to evolving that metapod, and I hoped that the giraffe egg would give me enough experience for it, so I was really focused on that. Uh, plus, I mean, there's normal Pokemon plenty in the game. You know, there's, there's so many of them. It doesn't really matter, but at the end of the day, I probably should have kept, caught it rather than, than kill it. Um, I yeah. also always tend to get confused whether it's a psychic or a normal type. I don't know why, but... It's well, both. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. But I always seem to think it's just psychic, which doesn't help along with it, basically. But um, I think that's about it for me. I think I'm about out of questions. Yeah, I don't have a lot of questions either, but I do want to remind everybody uh, that coming up here tonight on the Randomania family of networks, we have three different events for you. If you are want to see some more Pokemon Crystal Cinco Bingo, that's going to be tonight at 9 p.m. on RM. Three, I want to say. Uh, I'm still trying to remember the color scheme here. Uh, right here on Randomania 1 at 8.30 p.m. tonight is the Dragon Warrior Chaos Event Tournament quarterfinal match. 
And uh, also at 9 p.m. tonight, we have the Zelda 2 Randomizer Weekly Event. So all three of those are going to be tonight on the Randomania family of networks, uh, starting at 8.30. So go ahead and make sure you tune in for those. Uh, also, if you want more Pokemon Crystal Bingo, uh, tomorrow we also have an 8 p.m. match as well. That's going to be here on the Randomania family of networks. Actually, Ter brought up a good point in Discord. Um, so he got... Um, he had an issue with the call of last goal. We ended up unmarking it for him because he um he called the last from Route 37. <laughs> um, so we unmarked that for him, and, and he got a phone call from the last telling him about Entei on 37. So phone strats, that's fantastic. Not quite my breed strats, but, you know, let's take what we can get. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. And they were talking about it in Discord earlier about people calling you to tell you about swarms. So it's interesting that like that conversation occurred and then we got a phone call about <laughs> about Entei. Yeah, that is fantastic. So if you haven't done so already, um, please make sure you give both of our honors a follow. That is twitch.tv slash cruel with two R's and two O's and twitch.tv slash tear. Our wonderful restreamer behind the scenes, J.K. Allen, too, has posted those comments, uh, those uh, those links here. So please go ahead and give him a follow as well. I suppose if you want to, you can give a follow to both myself and my co-commentator, uh, uh, Mizzle Sticks, over here. If you, you know, if you desperately want to, you know, lots more puns if you if you feel the need to. Um, but with that, do you have anything else you want to say over here, Ms? Uh, no, I'm good on my end. Uh, Cruel Tear, do you guys have any uh, closing thoughts on what was actually a really good race? No, thank you guys for commentating. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this uh, this card in the seed, so uh, here's to many more. All right, so that is going to do it for us here at Randomania. So we're going to go ahead and hit the host button, and the Randomizer 5000 has determined that we're going to go see actually somebody I was talking about earlier, uh, Mr. F. Coughlin, the guy who created Zelda 1 and Zelda and uh, SMB3 randomizers, is actually playing Zelda 3 randomizer. So we're going to go ahead and host Freddy. So if you want to watch some Zelda 3 key sanity, you can go ahead and do that. So thank you guys all very much for watching. On behalf of both of our runners, our Restreamer and Mizzlesticks, I am the Greenleaf Effect. Reminding everybody to, of course, keep hailing.